friends, we have before us two decades of Pluto in Aquarius, except September 1st through November 19th, when Pluto returns to Capricorn just in time for the U.S. election. What does that portend, you may well ask? As September rolls in, conservatives may look like they're sitting pretty going into election day. And perhaps the election will take until mid-November to sort out. The trend begins around May 2nd when Pluto is stationary retrograde. Maximum intensity on the Capricorn side around October 11 when Pluto is stationary direct. With Pluto in Aquarius for 20 years, conservatives, however, will have to redefine themselves, but so will progressives. And one thing about Pluto and Aquarius, it is unpredictable. So let's dig in and find out why. But first, a word about astrology. Astrology is a science for poets, metaphor sneaking around with mathematics. Like dependence on psychics, or the Bible. Astrology can drive you crazy if you surrender free will and become addicted to constant guidance. Astrology is a conversation with the heavens, a map of shifting possibilities, not an infallible oracle. There is no doom in astrology, only the spectrum of choices. Your good choice maybe someone else's bad choice. Hard aspects can have unhappy results, of course, but they can also have happy results. Happy aspects can indicate harm caused by excess or false optimism. So for example, sometimes hard Saturn aspects actually bring us rewards and promotions if we have been devoted and we have been thorough. And sometimes happy aspects cause us to make bad decisions or to overindulge. The planets and their aspects do not cause us to experience certain unavoidable things. They are not forces that compel us against our will. They are more like signposts and timekeepers or nature's signs of impending weather. The best explanation of why astrology works I've found is by the Roman philosopher Plotinus. Quote, the stars are like letters that inscribe themselves at every moment in the sky. Everything in the world is full of signs. All events are coordinated. All things depend on each other. Everything breathes together, end quote. It suggests quantum entanglement, doesn't it? And that the world is full of meaning. The entry of Pluto into Aquarius, January 20th, 2024, may have been the most important astrological event of the next 20 years. The other big aspect of 2024, Jupiter conjunct Uranus in spring, is another indicator that the stagnant hangover of Pluto and Capricorn is about to be swept away by waves of change of the sort that create distinct transitions between what might be called eras. The difference between the era of Elvis and vinyl singles and the era of Taylor Swift and iPhones. One day, someone invents movable type and everything changes. Somebody figures out ambulances and lives are saved ever after. One night, a curious man looks through his telescope and sees Uranus. The vulgar but funny English pun contained in the name of that planet, Uranus, is appropriate because it rules the weird and the impertinent since both are shocking to the complacent. We can find an example of the shift from one era to another by looking back to 2008, 
when Pluto entered Sagittarius, commencing 15 years ruled by Jupiter. In that era, which began in 1995, we saw the climb to dominance of now ubiquitous companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. Computers replaced typewriters as Windows 95 provided for the first time a consumer level product with both a modem link and a browser, Explorer 1.0. During Pluto in Sagittarius, social media began on America Online. Motorola debuted the Motorola Star TAC, the Star TAC, the first flip phone, thrilling Star Trek fans who had always longed for their own communicators. Wealth multiplied massively for investors driving a gold rush euphoria. So Jupiter, but it could expand only so far. The invention of lucrative derivatives that even their creators couldn't understand fueled an endless rally of false certainty and mistaken optimism. In 2008, Saturn took over as ruler of Pluto's journey through Capricorn and the pin hit the balloon. World markets crashed. All of a sudden, all that optimism was replaced by pessimism and everything was reduced to facts, numbers, and statistics instead of speculation. Although, of course, some frothy speculation continued as it does now in the area of AI. We can expect just as momentous a shift now, but in a different direction. Saturn's job was to deflate overblown Jupiter. Releasing the icy grip of Saturn is the job of Uranus. As Terence McKenna wrote, there are times when everything seems to go right and times when everything seems to go wrong. Since 2008, as we've pointed out, Pluto has been in Capricorn. During Pluto and Capricorn, many became acquainted with the crosses and the shadows we've been carrying in our own lives and those carried by our institutions of government and business. These sobering revelations and displays of dysfunction led to chronic depression and anxiety triggered by the news and the feed. Do the following themes sound to you like dominant traits of 2008 to 2023 individually and collectively? Of course, there are always exceptions, but we're talking zeitgeist here, the feeling of the times. Pessimism, depression, procrastination, intolerance, suspicion, bossiness, negative loops, awkward silences, ruthless self-interest, morbid, fatalistic, condescending, unforgiving, afraid of failure, perfectionist, critical, resigned, and easily hurt, but pretends not to show it. Perhaps you'll agree that over the last 15 years, these tendencies have harmed politics, the world economy, social media, and uncountable family dinners. Representative Capricorn and Pluto symbols might include elderly elites, or shall we call them old goats, holding on to power at any cost. Also murderous peace officers, judges who try to impose religious and business principles on a majority who disagree, and stubborn hotheads who hold on to their opinions desperately while dismissing all others unable to tolerate doubt, paradox, contradiction, or evidence that they might be wrong. Ferocious Sagittarian promises of endless prosperity and the fear of being left out had influenced billions of people. Pluto and Capricorn brought humanity back down to earth. Loss, 
helped us learn to cherish or made us bitter. Goals changed. The exploited began to work together in ways that fly underneath the radar of social media and mass media, which are, after all, two sides of one coin. Many of us developed some survival skills, greater patience, and a more mindful approach to life. Many of us developed our senses of humor, especially the dark arts of irony and sarcasm. As Sartre wrote, freedom is what you do with what's been done to you. Pluto's last trip through Capricorn was in 1762 to 1778. I believe you'll find the themes of those times similar to 2008 to 2024. Join me on a journey into the unfortunately all too familiar past as reflected in the history of the last time Saturn ruled Pluto. Then as now the world was embroiled in a world war that was pretending it wasn't a world war. The Seven Years War neared its end. Fought by the great European powers, led by the British and Germans, and on the other side the French, the war also involved their far-flung colonies. That war and other related wars occurring at the same time represented the maneuvering of autocratic elites to seize more territory and wealth at the expense of smaller nations and tragedies for millions of innocent victims. The aim, national and then global domination by one culture, one religion, and one set of political and economic agendas. The same old story, same shit, different day. In the 1760s, the American colonies suffered a financial recession, which was really a depression when Pluto was in Capricorn. Trade was sluggish, debt rising, cash hard to come by, and supply disruptions common. The British needed money to pay for their expensive wars, so taxes were raised at home and in the colonies, leading to the American Declaration of Independence. The British offered to stop the tax. Instead of being subject to the crown as part of the United Kingdom, the American colonies could govern themselves, decide about taxation on their own as part of the Commonwealth. The compromise was unpopular and rumors of revolution multiplied. Meanwhile, in Russia, bubonic plague killed somewhere between 16% to 30% of the population of Moscow. In 1772, the plague struck Persia, killing 2 million. In 1775, the deadly North American smallpox epidemic began. It would last seven years, killing more than 100,000, a low figure that doesn't include another devastation of indigenous tribes. All this and catastrophic weather led many to believe the end times were near. Teenage Alexander Hamilton described Hurricane San Agustin of 1772 in the Caribbean as, quote, sufficient to strike astonishment into angels, end quote. The weather turned cold. In London, the Thames froze over many times. The so-called Little Ice Age afflicting Europe became more severe, further disrupting food supplies and commerce. So even though the places may be different and the kind of pandemic may be different and the wars and who's involved in them may be different, these themes of kind of surreptitious world war, uh, of supply chain disruptions, of institutions being threatened and crumbling, of uh, disease and of, of uh, food issues related to weather. Those things were happening in Pluto and Capricorn and of course still continue somewhat. Typically, Pluto and Capricorn indicates the furthest empowerment and protection of elites dominated by autocratic males. Does that sound familiar? 
but it also exposes their disturbing secrets. The less privileged are expected and were expected then to accept suffering in the name of the patriarchy as a solemn duty. Needless to say, this was a time of widespread pessimism. The affliction of feeling powerless in a world of corrupt elites began to erupt in protests and boycotts foreshadowing revolutions that were just around the corner. Will protest movements that arose during Pluto and Capricorn rise again? The injustices that inspired the Arab Spring, Occupy Wall Street, and the great gathering at Standing Rock, they continue. We will most likely see these issues addressed again during Pluto and Aquarius. As the great playwright George Bernard Shaw wrote, quote, if history repeats itself, and the unexpected always happens, how incapable man must be of learning from experience, end quote. So what does history tell us about Pluto and Aquarius? As Pluto traveled through Aquarius from 1778 to 1798, revolutions in America, France, and Haiti inspired changes in governance all over the world as elites recognized that to avoid the same fate as the red coats in the colonies and of Marie Antoinette, who never said, let them eat cake, tell everyone. They had to grant more power and wealth to the majority. Of course, we have a revolution going on in Haiti right now of a sort. And we also have uh, revolutionary urges in America and in France, as well as other places in the world. With Pluto in Aquarius, the Treaty of Paris declared the American Revolution over, and the United Kingdom officially recognized the existence of the United States as a separate nation. A great expense, but with minimal commitment of troops, France helped strip Great Britain of its most valuable colony. America stuck France with a bill. Our refusal to pay it caused the financial hardships and the bread shortage that led to the French Revolution. The slogan of that revolution, Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité, which can be translated freedom, equality, solidarity, could be a motto for Pluto and Aquarius. Here is a good mantra for it by Viktor Frankl, the great psychotherapist, quote, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Near the end of Pluto and Aquarius in 1795, Frances Wright was born. She would grow up to inspire and scandalize America with her speeches demanding the abolition of slavery, equality for women, free love, and birth control. She is a great symbol of Pluto and Aquarius. And the generation that will be born with Pluto and Aquarius should be also in the majority champions of causes related to equality and freedom. Frances inspired the poet Walt Whitman, who said of her, she touched the widest range of themes, spoke informally, colloquially. She published while there, The Free Inquirer, which my daddy took and I often read. She has always been to me one of the sweetest of sweet memories. We all loved her, fell down before her. Her very appearance seemed to enthrall us." End quote. He elsewhere described her as serene and like a deer. During Pluto and Aquarius, movements to abolish slavery became popular in America and Europe ultimately leading to the American Civil War and the end of the state-sanctioned slave trade. Here is a list of notable moments during past sojourns of Pluto in Aquarius. The discovery of zero. 
the Carolingian Renaissance, which brought advancements in law, architecture, art, and music to the Dark Ages. The Chinese invented movable printing type. Other Pluto and Aquarius inventions and discoveries include the astrolabe, block printing, spectacles for correcting vision, heliocentric astronomy, first flight using a hot air balloon, the discovery of the planet Uranus, the metric system, bicycles, parachutes, circular saws, threshing machines, power looms, gas lamps, ambulances, industrial cooperatives, the lathe, jars for preserves, ball bearings, the theory of black holes, cast iron, prototypes of steamboats, the smallpox vaccine, but also the guillotine. Mary Wollstonecraft published the first defense of feminism written in English by a woman. William Blake invented a new mythology that transformed art and poetry. The evolution of instruments and orchestras enabled geniuses from Mozart to Beethoven to revolutionize music. We can see how freedom weaves through these events. The astrolabe allows for navigation over long distances. Gas lamps made it possible to continue activities that were once limited to daylight. Spectacles allowed the far-sighted to see near and the near-sighted to see far. Jars allowed food to be preserved, one of many innovations that made it possible for humans not to spend every day cultivating or hunting for food. The glorious era of Baghdad is a good model for the positive potential. During Pluto and Aquarius, Baghdad became a center of the evolution of civilization. There, astronomy, medicine, geography, philosophy, alchemy, and mathematics, and the preservation of Greek and Roman classics that were lost to the West, changed not only Baghdad, but the whole world. Immigrants were welcomed from everywhere as long as they brought books with them. In a way, on a side note, the story of Christian Rosenkreuz at the heart of the Rosicrucian movement began here because Baghdad may have inspired the famous Rosie Cross story. The father CRC traveled to Damkar in Arabia. The Damkar story inspired John Winthrop the Younger to try to find a ship to Turkey so he could get the same training CRC had. He did make it to Constantinople, but was disappointed to find no one had the wisdom he sought. Instead, he came to America and lived out the Rosicrucian ideals of learning, free healing for the sick, and defending the innocent to an admirable degree of attainment. Things to look out for. We listed the negative traits of Capricorn and found they have been common during Pluto's sojourn in Capricorn. So what are negative Aquarius traits that might cause trouble over the next 20 years? Unnecessary urgency, collateral damage justified statistically in the name of an alleged greater good. As Baudrillard wrote, quote, like dreams, statistics are a form of wish fulfillment, end quote. Aquarius is a fixed sign, and Aquarians can fixate on myriad details, missing the big picture, or vice versa, can miss crucial details while fixating on the big picture. Other themes include being shallow about other people's feelings and alienated from our own using the mind or technology, including pharmaceutical, to suppress emotions, a tendency to cause delays by contradiction and paradox, weird for the sake of weirdness, and fond of shocking others, hating being told what to do. Extremism? Look no further than the French Revolution spawning the terror during Pluto and Aquarius. Sarcasm goes hand in hand with aloofness and difficulty trusting others. Detached, to say the least. After all, before the discovery of Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius was Saturn. 
Most astrologers believe Aquarius is co-ruled by Saturn and Uranus. It's often said that Capricorns can be very cold, especially when crossed, but Aquarians can be outer space cold. Some Aquarian predicaments, easily bored, stubborn about what they think they know, falling down exotic rabbit holes to the point of impairing daily life, ignoring the present while obsessing on the future, acknowledging other people's problems superficially while for the most part ignoring them. There is also the Aquarian problem with procrastination. It can be hard to come to a decision. Your Aquarian friend is most likely the one who gives you a collection of possible answers to your question while being reluctant to commit to any opinion on them. They may, however, provide detailed lists of why these answers may be correct, but also why they are probably wrong. When asked what time it is, Aquarians may show you how to build a clock while telling you the history of timekeeping. We can't move on from our description of the dark side of Pluto and Aquarius without first mentioning the N-word, Nazi. With their obsession with technological innovation, they're all for one ideology. They're a crusader-like commitment to the mission of an allegedly better future. Their ecological activism, lightning warfare, and fascination with fringe science and the occult Nazis had an Aquarius vibe. Part of the Fuhrer's magic was his use of a new technology called radio that allowed him to speak to an entire nation in their living rooms. We can see burgeoning fascist tendencies all over the world today, but the Nazis gained power when Pluto was in Cancer, a sign that is all about defending the mother or fatherland. And that is also the case with some moms. The boundaries of the motherland can be redrawn to encompass the whole world. So what are some positive Aquarius traits we can all cultivate to get better results during Pluto and Aquarius? Aquarius is humanitarian, innovative, creative, inventive, original, impartial, loyal when loyalty is earned easygoing, inspired by uniqueness. We can become independent, friendly, fond of diversity, defenders of equality and freedom, eager to learn, free thinkers who can appreciate both sides of a paradox and all sides of complicated issues. We can follow a trail of synchronicity or find the unity in diversity. We can benefit from science while remembering that it has much yet to explain and that there are many mysteries that continue to deserve respect. A quote from Octavio Paz may capture the feeling of the new era. Quote, to us, the value of a work lies in its newness, the invention of new forms or a novel combination of old forms, the discovery of unknown worlds or the exploration of unfamiliar areas in worlds already discovered, revelations, surprises, end quote. Let's talk about the alchemical power of Pluto. Pluto is all about moving us up the evolutionary ladder, spiritually and physically. If you think the new age was new agey, wait till you see Pluto in Aquarius. Of course, this is already happening. The amount of pagan, Eastern esoteric, Western esoteric, and indigenous symbols, practices, and beliefs on social media is astounding. New hybrids are being invented and traditions revived. Here is a quote from the Taoist Complete Reality School's classic, The Book of Balance and Harmony, that captures the kind of evolution Pluto in Aquarius seeks. Quote, deep knowledge is to be aware of disturbance before disturbance, to be aware of danger before danger, to be aware of destruction before destruction, to be aware of calamity before calamity, 
strong action is training the body without being burdened by the body exercising the mind without being used by the mind working in the world without being affected by the world carrying out tasks without being obstructed by tasks by deep knowledge of principle one can change disturbance into order change danger into safety change destruction into survival change calamity into fortune by strong action on the way one can bring the body to the realm of longevity bring mind to the sphere of mystery bring world to great peace and bring tasks to great fulfillment end quote with pluto in aquarius we are likely to see all the spirituality that's been evolving over social media blossom into more public activities it will be a good time to address what bell hooks so astutely observed quote i am often struck by the dangerous narcissism fostered by spiritual rhetoric that pays so much attention to individual self-improvement and so little to the practice of love within the context of community end quote we are also likely to see a more playful approach to spirituality with less clinging to revelations of the past a good quote for this aspect of pluto and aquarius comes from the founder of shingon buddhism kukai quote do not seek to follow in the footsteps of the men of old seek what they sought end quote we may also be reminded of Ralph Waldo Emerson's uh, wonderful observation that why should we be beholden to the revelations of the past? Why can't we have a direct revelation of the divine that is our own? We can see, astrologically speaking, that there is great potential now for changing the zeitgeist to something less gloomy. Before we can make gold, we must go through the stage that reduces to ashes. Both of these processes are always present with Pluto, death and rebirth. When Pluto entered Capricorn, some astrologers predicted that it would destroy the governments and institutions, including the banking system. It didn't, but it did expose the problems, the weaknesses, the cracks in them. Humanity patched them up wherever possible, and the monster staggered onward. For a very few, the times were lucrative indeed, but most struggled and still do. But from the ashes of Saturn's surrender to despair will come the surprise of Uranian genius, shocking changes and new generations. The resistance will be strong, especially in the early years, but there's no stopping it. Today's entrenched apocalyptic politics of intolerant division will fade before the shock of the new. Here's hoping that technology and the marvelous inventions and cures already on the way are enough of a shock to kick over the process. As an astrologer, I must admit that the shock could be more unpleasant than that. There's always a possibility of disasters of one kind or another with Uranus. But then Uranus and Taurus, while Pluto was in Capricorn, caused some astrologers to predict major earthquakes. We didn't really have the string of major earthquakes predicted. Uranus is still in Taurus, but Pluto has moved on. Whatever the shock might be, with Pluto and Aquarius, it may very well be unforeseen. Some astrologers believe that the joy or severity of the human experience depends on what we individually and collectively bring to it in our daily lives, because wise choices give better results. Saturn punishes the false and the reckless, but rewards the devoted and consistent. Change has only just begun. Three more significant astrological events occur in the middle years of the 2020s. Saturn will begin a new almost 30 year cycle when it enters Aries. Uranus will enter Gemini for the first time in about 84 years and Neptune will enter Aries, bringing to an end a 164 year trip around the Zodiac and starting a new one. 
after the stagnant astrological placements we've been enduring, these new cycles promise exciting endings and beginnings. Neptune was in Aries during the American Civil War. What sort of pent-up frustrations might erupt into another crisis? We needn't list the abundant candidates for most likely. Uranus and Gemini brought Pearl Harbor through the end of World War II and the dawn of the atomic age. So are wars unavoidable now? Well, astrologically, the people alive today are, believe it or not, a level up the spiral. Last time, Pluto was in Cancer from the First World War up to a year before the second started. It took the ego and charismatic leaders of Pluto and Leo to get the tanks rolling. Cancer and Leo are more likely to go to war for family and country. Aquarius respects borders, but sees through them to recognize the similarities and appreciate the differences. Younger generations will step up in some way when Saturn and Neptune join in Aries, conspicuously displaying the inevitable changing of the guard. How then shall we meet these momentous times? We can be open-minded and curious about what might happen next. We can stay focused on those we cherish, grounding ourselves with love. We can follow intuition, learn how to do new things, and we can start fresh. We can also follow the good advice of Theodore Roosevelt. Do what you can, where you are, with what you have. In other words, unleash the power of imagination. Letting go of what we've cherished in the past is never easy, but finding ourselves in the future is a worthy adventure for anyone. The roller coaster that's been slowly climbing since 2008 is about to let go on a wild ride that no one can really predict. Neither the gloomiest doom mongering nor the most innocent faith in progress are out of the question. There will be plenty of doom and progress to go around. But if ever there was a time for reimagining a better future for ourselves, for all of us, According to the stars, this would be it. It's a good time for America to finally accept the invitation the Lakota spiritual leader, Chief Sitting Bull gave us in 1876. Let us put our minds together and see what life we can make for our children. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, somewhat brief introduction to Pluto and Aquarius.